Welcome everyone to Best Books and Toys for Babies. My name is Sarah Ellen and we are very excited to have you here today. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a favorite book or toy for your baby, please do feel free to share about it in the chat. And we are going to have a door prize drawing at the end. So let me make sure, okay, that I am still visible. So we have a poll, let me get this poll going. We just wanna know what your family is looking like right now. Are you expecting? Do you already have a baby? What age? So please feel free to vote on that. Looks like we have several with older kids as well as some babies and currently expecting. So welcome. And got a lot of the younger babies the newborns and the early mobile babies. So let's see, it looks like I've got a couple folks that haven't voted. I'll give it 10 more seconds to see if you wanna vote on that. All right, we will end that poll. Thank you so much for letting us know. Here is the results. Can you guys all see the results? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, we will keep going on the slide. So Best Books and Toys for Babies, this is my favorite book. Um, this is called Share, this book. And I love this book by Dr. John Hutton. He is a pediatrician and it's really fantastic for learning how to share books with babies. And if any of you who are expecting have been joining us for the prenatal series on Wednesdays at noon, our early literacy prenatal program is next Wednesday and I'll be talking a little bit more about this book then as well as some more specifics for how to share books with babies. So feel free to check that out. I know that some of our libraries were giving away copies of this book for free starting September 12th. I don't know if any of them still have copies, but you're welcome to call. Oh, looks like Library 21C does still. Mm -hmm. So please stop by Library 21C or call your other local branch and see if they still have board books. They are free for anyone who is either expecting a baby or has a baby already. So fantastic book and we're happy to be giving those out. So before we get into some of the book recommendations that we have, we just wanted to go over some basics of brain development. Uh, babies' brains are so amazing. They're actually born with 100 billion neurons. Uh, like at birth, they've got all the neurons they're ever going to need in their entire life. But the connections between those neurons, which we call synapses, are only 25% in place. However, it starts out at 25% and it increases rapidly in those first three years of life. And we've got a, an example here that just kind of shows how few connections there are in the newborn stage versus one month and then nine months and then two years. And at a certain point, our brains actually stop making new connections. We start pruning things out. So the more the activities and knowledge is reinforced, those are the things that are pruned out. And that's why the adult brain actually has fewer connections than the two-year-old brain right there. But how do we form those connections? One way that we form those connections are through stimuli. Um, and they need a lot of different kind of stimulation in order to make those connections. And they get stimulation in all sorts of ways through all five of their senses. And you guys as parents and caregivers are providing this every single day. Um, we call these the five practices of every child ready to read. And it's basically when you talk or sing or read or write or play with your baby, you are helping your baby form new connections. And our presentation today is going to be kind of targeted at books and toys and how they fit into those different categories. So keep watching for our recommendations. So our first category today is talk. Uh, talking with your baby builds their knowledge and their vocabulary. And um, basically when we talk about talking with your baby, 
we mean you can keep a running narrative throughout your entire day. The more you talk about what you're doing, like when you're cooking, you can talk about the ingredients that you're using. You can talk about their textures and their colors and their shapes and their smells. You can talk about the process that you're going to use to cook things. Every time you talk to your baby, they're absorbing that. And the more that they hear you talk, the more that they're going to learn about their world, the more connections they're going to be forming. So I've got some categories here I'm going to share with you on talk. Our first talk category is opposite books. And I have an example right here. This is tall and short. And opposite books are really great because you can talk about how things are alike and how things are different. And you can do the really basic things like, look, the puppy dog is really short and the giraffe is really, really tall. But you can also talk about things like, look, they're both wearing blue. The puppy dog is wearing a blue sweater and the giraffe is wearing a blue scarf, but the giraffe is tall and yellow with spots and the puppy dog is short and brown. So lots of great ways that you can talk about opposites. This is just a fun book because it does have a lot of different opposites and it's mostly focused on animal opposites here. Next category we have, my mouse keeps disappearing. So I'm like, where is it? There we go. Cause and effect. And this is one of my favorite categories for a talk. Um, talking about why things happen. So this is Baby Happy, Baby Sad by Leslie Patricelli. She does a lot of these kinds of really simple books with basic pictures and, you know, talks about how baby is sad because its toy is getting taken away and baby is happy because now they're going to share the toy. And um, that's a really fun, very simple one to talk about cause and effect. Talking about cause and effect is nice because it basically is a big precursor to the building of logic in those baby brains. Uh, you're, you're learning reasoning, you're learning why things happen. And I also really, really love Jean Julian. Um, this is Why the Face. And this is a wonderful book because not only can you make faces with your baby to this book, but you can also talk about cause and effect. So for example, why the face? Why does she have her fingers in her ears? Ah, it's too loud. Look, it's a rock band going on. No wonder you would make that face. So really, really fun book with faces and things that you can talk about for cause and effect. Our next talk category is baby's world. And this is one of my number one tips that I love to give to parents when they're sharing books with babies is that if you can find something in the book that you have in your house, you can show them together and talk about, look, banana, and then show them an actual banana or, you know, paper towel roll and show them a paper towel roll. It really helps your baby develop a sense that what they're seeing on the page of the book is actually something, it's depicting something in their real life. So this is the baby goes beep, which is fun because it's lots of routines for a baby's day. And I also really like this book called Food, which is wonderful because it has these cutouts. Um, there's, they're actually raised so you can feel them and really simple pages. So like this is bread, there's peas, and it's something that both gives a sensory experience for baby, really simple pictures, so easier for those younger baby eyes to see. All right, our last talk category is American Sign Language Signs for Babies. And we like to talk about using sign language with babies because they can't really communicate with words yet, right? Uh, they're still learning and absorbing and it's gonna take them some time before they start making sounds on their own and before they can start 
making and forming words, especially words that have meaning. So, but the nice thing is that they can gesture to communicate before they're talking. And if we start signing to babies as early as three months, they will start to begin to respond as early as six to nine months. And I like the books that we have up here on the screen, Baby Signs, the one in the top left. That is a book specifically for parents and caregivers. So that is like how to do baby signs, uh, what, what are the good best practices, and then different kinds of signs that you can use. So we, we should have that in our parenting collection that you can check out at the library. These other books though are board books and they have specific baby signs that you can use with your babies really simple pictures, and of course they have baby faces, which babies love to look at as well. All right, so we're gonna move on and Alana's gonna talk about toys. Toy time, toy time. Hey, um, we're gonna have some fun here looking at some of the different things we can do as parents with toys and with ourselves because we are the best toy of all for our child. Um, the one thing you can do for sure is talk to your child and you don't just have to say words to your child. You can make all sorts of noises like la la la, la and you know things like that and brrr, on baby's tummy and things like that. All those are ways of making noises and especially imitate your baby. Your baby especially in that very beginning time of newborn they make all these great faces and these these great things go on in their bodies that are that are causing all these things on their face to happen and um, it's it's a good time to just follow whatever baby does repeat it eventually they'll get that idea that that's communicating and they'll try and do something to have you do it when they get a little bit older um, some of the toys that we do have, um, oh yeah, teaching the signs, we were talking about that, but some of the toys that are really good for this are uh, baby doll. Babies love anything with a little face on it, and um, you can talk to baby about what does Dolly feel today, is, is Dolly happy or sad or, ooh, P.U., that's stinky, things like that. Um, blocks are another fun thing that you can do to develop talking skills. You can talk about what color blocks you have. You can talk about how they fit on top of each other, how many you have. Uh, just so many different things you can do with blocks and baby. These also have pictures on them as well as numbers. And those things can be talked about as well too. Um, just like uh, Sarah Ellen was saying, if you have a toy giraffe or zebra or something and you have a block that has that, you can show the toy along with the block and say zebra and that will be a beginning way of baby to understand. Um, rings, the rings are fun too. Um, rings have have lots of different colors generally um, and they have different sizes. You can talk about how they fit on top of each other. You can put the orange ring on top of the red ring or below the red ring so you can talk about spatial things. Um, all sorts of wonderful things. The color, um, you can tip it. It just has a lot of different stuff. Um, small and large. And then um, let's see, the other thing that I was going to say, um, which is very important, is a, kind of a note during COVID, talk is extremely important for baby. And it's important for baby to see your mouth moving. And I understand, you know, you wanna be careful around your baby. You don't want your baby to be exposed to anything. But consider taking even just a regular mask and cutting a hole in it that looks like a mouth, and I just stapled this really quickly. A pe I took a double layer of um, a Ziploc bag, and I stapled it around here for me so that baby can see what you're talking, you know, through. And if you put, oops, sorry about that. Um, if if you put something on here, like a little. Um, uh, not soap, but um, sometimes you can find like a spray that's for non-fogging and you can put it on the plastic and then it won't fog up on you. Just make sure you don't put the plastic under the part that your nose is because it'll be very difficult to breathe. Uh, let's see. 
uh, a game that you can play with noisy toys is um, if you have like a toy that has just a little rattly kind of thing. You can put it over to one side of baby's head and see if baby, a newborn baby, will turn toward it. Um, also the other way, or as your baby gets older, you can try and take that toy and hide it underneath a blanket and shake it and say, what's that? Can you find it? You know, and then baby can look for it. So those are some fun things to do with noisy toys. Thank you, Alana. Sure. All right. So our next category is sing with your baby. And I know that some of us can tend to feel a little shy about singing, uh, especially around other people. But I have to tell you, your baby loves your voice more than anything else in the world. It is their favorite sound and they love it when you sing to them. So don't be shy around your baby. Singing is very soothing. It's wonderful for in the car rides when your baby is getting a little fussy and it really helps them hear smaller sound. So we're gonna share some books that have to do with singing and sound play. And our first category, if I can get this to advance, there we go, is sound play. So um, when we talk about playing with sounds, we're talking about playing with those really small, short sounds like moo and ba, and things that basically help baby learn what the sounds are that we say in our language. Uh, this book is by Ethan Lawn. It's Good Night. He has a couple other ones too. One is thank you, one is hi, and they're all different animal sounds, animals saying good night in their own words. So this is a really fun one for animal sounds. I also really, really love Steve Light's books. This is Trains Go. I've got Trucks Go here. Um, there's a whole, they're, they're just really wonderful for some really simple, fun sound play. For example, the Streamliner goes, Ooh, 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 ooh. And you get a really nice ooh and the woo sound right there with that book. So I should mention, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the presentation, but we are going to be sending out handouts to all of you after the presentation. Everyone who registered will get two handouts, one on best books, one on best toys, and they all have clickable links to either the library catalog or to Amazon so you can find these. So if you're seeing something that you really like, you know, you can write it down if you want, but otherwise we will be sending out them to you and it'll have the authors and the links so it'll be easy for you to find. But that is sound play. And our next book category in scene is songs. And I've got an example here. You are my sunshine. Um, singing emphasizes sounds because it stretches them out. And often many songs will even assign different notes to different parts of words or to different words altogether. For example, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. All right, so it slows it down. It helps your baby really learn to hear those sounds. You know, when we're talking, we can tend to talk fast, especially when you're presenting like this. So if we're talking too fast, please let us know in the comments. But um, singing is wonderful for that. I love the Caroline Jane Church. She actually has a couple board books like this one. There's one called Preschool Songs, which is fun too. I also really like uh, Tim Hopgood. Now, um, there is a, a board book version of What a Wonderful World. I just happen to have the full color big picture book version um, at home. But he does books based on popular songs. So he's done Wonderful World. He's done Singing in the Rain. And uh, there's a Moon River one. And they're just really fun, sweet songs and just gorgeously illustrated. So that is what a wonderful world. And then there are books like Snuggle Puppy, which is by Sandra Boyton. She has a lot of books that are songs, but not necessarily songs that you know the tune of. So you can make up your own tune 
And if you need to change it every time you read the book, that's okay too. So totally okay to play with songs like that. Next, we have our nursery rhymes. So nursery rhymes are so wonderful because they not only help our babies and our young children learn about uh, background knowledge, because nursery rhyme knowledge is something that a lot of adults know. It's in a lot of pop culture references, a lot of cartoons and everything, but they also help children learn how to hear rhymes. And research has shown that they can hear rhymes. They can actually tell if words rhyme with each other a long time before they can actually start making their own rhymes. And I like uh, Claire Beaton's garden rhymes on the screen there. Claire Beaton has a lot of different board book rhyme books. So garden rhymes is just one of them. A Pocket Full of Posies is a really sweet nonfiction book that's actually, it's not a board book, but it's got some really beautiful illustrations done with that sweet sewn style. And then I wanted to share, this is Annie Kubler. And this is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but she does a whole bunch of nursery rhymes with ASL signs to them. So not only are you getting a song, but you're also getting how to do some baby sign language signs. So uh, lots of those. This is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which is a great song to sing, especially at bedtime and everything. All right, we've got a poll. I'm gonna put this poll up and see. We wanna know what kinds of nursery rhymes do you like to sing or chant? So feel free to vote on that. Give us an idea. Looks like we got some itsy bitsy spider favorites. I know we have a lot of options there. It's hard to choose sometimes. I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds for people to vote if you haven't voted already. And if you want to, if there's a, a nursery rhyme on here that you're not familiar with and you'd like to hear the tune, uh, type that out in the chat and we'll see what we can do for you. All right, I'm gonna end the polling and then share the results. Looks like Itsy Bitsy Spider won, but uh, we've got a small poll group here. So we also have this little piggy and the wheels on the bus and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I definitely like all of those. All right, Alana, I think, I think it's uh, toy time for seeing. All right. Toy time. Okay, let me move the poll off of my screen. All righty. So, um, toy time is great fun. We are going to look at some ways that you can do singing with toys. So first, make sure you share your favorites with your baby. Think back to when you were younger or when your mother used to sing to you or your grandmother or like my, uh, or maybe like my grandfather used to bounce me on his knee and do a little, little horse one. So um, think of something, you know, from when you're younger and make sure to pass that on to your children because they will love those rhymes just as much as you did. Uh, um, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, don't forget to sing popular songs. Popular songs are just as much fun for baby. They enjoy it, especially if you start dancing around and, and giving them a little twirl and things like that. They'll have a good time with the singing with popular things on the radio. Just sway and dance and have fun and clap along, whatever you can do with your body to help to facilitate the song and the fun time with your baby. Now, some toys that we have. We have many different toys that you can use with baby that are um, fun to use. Anything that's like a shaker, you know, like the little um, shaker eggs that they have, that we have here at the library. The, these are usually available around um, easily. You can, I know you can get these at Toy Station 
and um, so that they're, they're kind of fun to use. You can even make your own after Easter with the little empty eggs and gluing them together with something like rice inside of them. It's a lot of fun to do that. And they're good for um, keeping rhythm. Also, rain stick toys. Those are great fun. Babies love to watch the little dots go up and down and through as, uh, you know, as you move it from side to side. And so those are fun to do with baby. Um, and then don't forget, if you happen to have a real piano at your house, it's great fun too. Let baby play around. But if you don't, these are great fun to play with too. Anything that's xylophone or pretend piano gives you your child the different tones, you know, so they can start to think about differences what sounds good together and things like that. Now, um, don't forget out of all the toys that there are in your house, this is one of the po most popular. If you have a cupboard full of Tupperware or pots and pans and old spoons you can give baby to play with, they are gonna have a great time making rhythm and filling things and having a good time. Um, also, um, if you have, uh, if you've heard the song um, Old MacDonald or, or um, the three little ducks uh, went out to play, well, if you have any of those, anytime you're in the bath, you can sing your songs with the ducks or anywhere else. Um, or if you have little animals, you can pull them out for Old MacDonald and make sure you extend the sound of the animal, moo, or quack so baby here's all the different things all the different sounds they'll be so funny to baby right now at the <laughs> beginning and then they'll learn how to do it too so those are some fun things you can do now one of the uh, quick little game you can play with your baby is um, to use a soft toy or a blankie or something like that and you kind of make the sounds of a scale, the notes going from low to high as you move up the baby or down to, you know, head to toe, make the notes go down. So it would be like, doot, 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 doot. You can just have fun. It's just a simple little thing you can do with your baby that gives them beginning musical things that they can start hearing notes together and hearing how they work. So lots of fun things to do with baby and music and song. Awesome. All right, so our next category is read. And of course, we're talking about reading a lot today, but one of the things we wanted to emphasize with this category is that we want to make reading time as enjoyable as possible. Uh, so an important thing to remember, especially as your babies start to get more mobile, so as they start to crawl and then be able to stand up and walk, they're gonna be a lot more interested in things around them than they may start being in books. Um, but that's okay. We want babies to really enjoy reading time. So if you can get them to look at a one page of a book, that's all right. And then you can put it down as soon as their interest is somewhere else. Uh, if you make it enjoyable, if you're not feeling stressed out about it, then they won't feel stressed out about it. As long as you are having fun together, it's all right that their interests will change as they grow and as they're developing and, and doing different skills and everything. But that being said, I've got some book categories here that are especially appealing to babies for reading time. So let's go through those. So for those of you who are expecting or have newborns, uh, some of the best books for newborn babies are black and white books and high contrast books. These are ones that have really simple high contrast images that will be a lot easier for your babies to focus their eyes on. Newborns don't have a lot of visual range yet. They can see about 18 inches when they're born, just about from like when they're nursing or being fed to your face and their eyes progress as they get older. So having really simple black and white images for them to focus on is a great way to start introducing books because we do wanna start introducing books right at birth. Uh, they're gonna get into that habit better 
if they start right away. And I like a lot of these authors here on the screen, Tana Hoban, Peter Linenthal, and then the Hello Friends books. Those are actually series. So they have multiple books that they come out with and a lot of them are available at the library. So you can come and check them out from PBLD. Our next read category, if I can find my mouse, there it is. Our baby faces. Oh, I love baby face books. So this is Global Babies and Global Babies is done by a Global Fund for Children. Um, I love these books because not only do they have just these most adorable baby faces in there. Look at those. Look how sweet they are. Um, babies love looking at faces. It's one of the first things that they're able to focus on. Again, we were talking about how newborns can start to focus on your face and learn their caregivers' faces early. Um, they love looking at other baby faces and they like mirroring facial expressions. So when we share baby face books with them, we can show them the book and show them the faces, but then we can show them our faces too. And something really fun that you could do is actually sit down with your baby in front of a mirror and pull out a book and then show baby the picture in the book and then make the same face in the mirror so that baby can see their, you know, your faces in the mirror making those facial expressions. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, the Making Faces book up there, our first book of emotions, is really fun because there's lots of specific different emotions that they do. But there are, it's definitely a lot of baby face books out there and you can certainly get them at your library. Next category is baby classics. And this is kind of a bit of a catch-all, but these books have remained popular over the years for really good reason. Um, Dear Zoo by Rod Campbell is a really fun lift the flap book with different flaps. Hopefully you can see that okay. And you can talk about both the animals, the animal sounds, We've got some really good vocabulary. You know, he was too fierce. Fierce. I sent him back. And we got a snake here. He was too scary. I sent him back. So great lift the flap book there. I also really love Brown Bear, Brown Bear. What do you say by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carle really wonderful rhythm and rhyme to that book as well as you can talk about things not only like what the animals are and what animal sounds they make but also what colors are in there so there's a lot of really good things that you can talk about in the book and then the very hungry caterpillar our favorite little caterpillar who likes eating a lot of different foods when we talked about talking about baby's world you know if you're eating strawberries for lunch pull out the book and show baby the picture of the caterpillar eating a strawberry and help them make that connection between what they're looking at and what they're eating. It's lots of fun. All right, mouse, there we go. And then lastly, um, bedtime books. So even mobile babies uh, need to sleep, right? <laughs> they get tired and hopefully they're taking some good naps and having a good bedtime at night. When, uh, when your baby's not so much interested in books during the day, having a book as part of your bedtime routine can be a really, really wonderful way to continue to help them encourage, uh, encourage them to enjoy reading. And we've got some really nice lullaby books here. Uh, Time for Bed by Jane Dyer is just very, very sweet with animals saying goodnight on each page. Goodnight Gorilla is a wonderful book for talking because there are not really many words in it and you can talk about the pictures. And then Goodnight Moon, I know that that is a very popular book that a lot of people know about. And I know, because I've done it myself, like you can get a little tired as an adult reading the same bedtime book night after night after night, but you can look for ways to make it interesting for you. Uh, Goodnight Moon is wonderful because like you can follow the moon as it's rising over the course of the evening. And there's a little mouse that you can look for and the mouse scurries around and hides in different places on different pages. So those are just some interesting ways to uh, 
keep reading those books. Repetition is so wonderful for babies. They love hearing books over and over and over again. The more that they hear them, the more that they learn them and understand them and understand the vocabulary and the concepts. So I know that we can get bored by it, but they really enjoy it. And these are some good books for that. All right, we are going to do a poll now. This is a trivia poll. Let's see if you can guess which book was published first. And then when we're done, I'll share the results and Alana is going to explain if you got it right or not. All right, I'll give it 10 more seconds. It's nice to know you guys are familiar with these books, so that's awesome. All right, let's share these results. Alana, did some folks get it right? Oh my gosh, they sure did. Um, yes, Pat the Bunny is the first book that was written. It was written for the author's own daughter. It was the first book of its kind where people would actually, that was sold, that, um, you could actually touch something and it would have a different texture to it. So yeah, you guys are really good. You're right awesome. on, right on. Awesome job, everybody. Yeah. All right, we are going to go into toy time for reading. All right, toy time. Okay, so toy time. Um, so reading, reading with toys, reading with toys is so much fun to do. Um, you should ch choose books that are bright and colorful for baby. If they're very, very young, choose things with a high contrast that will make um, it much easier. Find things that are, have kind of a, a play uh, component to it, something that, that makes it even more fun. Um, the interactive books. Um, make sure that always when you're reading a, reading a book, you exaggerate the sounds of the different things. So if you have a car, vroom along, or your cow will say moo and make that long and uh, fun for baby. Um, here are a couple of books that we have here um, that we use at baby time. Um, they're kind of fun. Unfortunately, because they are such high tactile books, they're not really good to check out. But um, I hope that you find things that li are like this that will be fun uh, for baby. So this one here is, hello duck, where's your tail? It's swimming behind me, cow. And so this is, look, this book looks at all the different tails of the different animals. See, it's very big, it's very bright. Um, and of course, all these little taggy things will be baby's absolute favorite. Um, another kind of fun thing to look for that's kind of a toy and kind of a book is something that are cards that are in very high contrast. So baby will see those baby faces, will see the squares with that little interesting red square in there. So baby will wonder about that and will will uh, enjoy um, letting his, his brain think about it. Look at this one here with the stripes and then there's just the one red stripe. Really draws baby's attention. Um, and of course, if you have a little doggy or a bear or something, you can point those out as you're showing these to baby. So a lot of fun. Um, those are a couple of toys that we have. And then um, something fun to do with your baby is to talk about things in order. So when you're reading a story, um, things happen in certain orders. If you have the three bears, you have a big bear and a little bear and uh, a mother bear, a father bear, a mother bear, and a baby bear. These are some old things toys that we used to have when I, my kids were little, but any three bears that you might have in your house of any variety um, would be fun to use with baby, talking about who's the big one, who's the medium one, who's the small one, can you guess who Papa Bear is? You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and then um, of course the blocks, pulling out those blocks again and doing the sequence of one red block 
two is a blue block and number three is a yellow block and talking about that. So those are really fun things to do um, as they get a little bit older and you are out and about look for the child's first letter of their name. Uh, that's a fun thing to do as you're starting to learn to recognize the sounds and, um, you know, what each um, letter looks like, the shape of the letter and everything. So you see two R's on a railroad crossing, and if your child is Russell, then that's just perfect. There are two R's, and of course they're for Russell. So... Anyway, those are fun games to play with your child. Thank you. Yes, those are so super fun. Mm -hmm. All right, our next category is write with your baby. And I know one might think, well, write with your baby. Like, how do you do that, right? But uh, for babies, what we want to do in terms of this particular skill set is help them understand that they have bodies, who their, what their bodies are, what their different parts are, and what they can do. And books can help develop motor skills. Babies will develop their larger motor skills first. So, you know, they, they kind of start out with jerky, whole arm movements, whole leg movements. They're working on, you know, being able to keep their head up during tummy time. Uh, but then as they mature and develop, they're going to be able to start refining those movements and they'll start understanding, oh, I have a hand and eventually, oh, I have individual fingers. And so um, these are the kinds of books that will help with developing those skills. Our first category then is Baby's Body. So these are books that name uh, different body parts on babies and that helps build the your baby's awareness of their individual parts and this is another of those books that you can really interact with your baby with because as you go through a book and find that baby's pointing to their nose you can point to your nose and you can point to your baby's nose and show them nose we sniff with our nose you go and we smell with our nose, right? And we can point to their ears. And I really love um, this little piggy on the screen there by Annie Kubler. It's just a wonderful rhyme. It was nice to know some of you guys knew that rhyme. So great because it helps your baby learn how to distinguish not only that they have feet, but they have individual toes. And you can do that rhyme just as easily with their hands as you can with their feet. In fact, I remember when my daughter was a baby, in the car, we would do this little piggy pretty often with her fingers because I didn't want to have to take her socks and shoes off, but it helped keep her quiet when she was in the back seat. She didn't really like being in the car seat very much. <laughs> Next category for write is touch and feel books. And I've got some nice examples here. So this is In My Nest. It's in the same series as Sarah Gillingham's On My Leaf, which you see on the screen there with the ladybug. These are really sweet puppet books, and we have a lot of these at the library that you can check out. They're really fun because you can use the puppet to tickle baby. You can have baby play with the puppet and touch the puppet, and it's just a nice tactile experience for them. Alana was showing you one of the Tales books. Jelly Cat does a lot of Tales books. That's a a toy maker. You can get them on Amazon and they are wonderful because they have different textures. Some of them will have like the crinkle paper in them so you can hear. Some of them might squeak. Some of them might boing out and everything. So those are really great things again to help develop tactile senses. And then we do have touch and feel books at the library. Right now, during times of COVID, you may not want to be checking those out as much, but um, I do like to recommend the Usborn series. Uh, this is That's Not My Owl. I have on the screen, That's Not My Duck. Um, that's Not My Owl. Its beak is too shiny. That's Not My Owl. Its wings are too fuzzy. Um, Usborn does a really good job with their touch and feel books. They're pretty flat. They're in there, so they're pretty sturdy. We don't have uh, Usborn books at the library for checkout, but you can get them through Usborn or I think through Amazon. Alana, do you have something to say there? 
Um, we have a comment or a question in uh -huh. our chat. Um, is there a certain age for each of these book types? Kind of like you pointed out the high contrast books for newborns. Um, I, I don't know that I would necessarily divide these up with different ages. I think you can, a lot of books, you can interact with them with your child in different ways depending on their stage. And that's kind of a wonderful thing, like a book that you share with your four-month-old is going to be a totally different experience when you share it again with them when they're eight months old. So, um, Alana, do you have anything to say to that oh, effect? I totally agree. When you were showing books uh, way back at the very beginning of this, some of those books I was thinking, you know, when you, when you read it to a baby, they get something out of it. But when you read it to a five-year-old, they're going to get a whole lot more. Even if it's a quote-unquote baby book, they're going to see so much more in those pictures than um, the baby, the infant will. So yeah, try it. Try your books with all different ages. You know, try and get the ones that have fewer text for the younger ones because it'll be too much. In fact, lots of times you just tell them what's on the page rather than, you know, or zero in on one thing because baby's only going to like that cow. So um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing I would say is most of our, um, the books that we have in this presentation are geared and chosen specifically for babies. But if you go into the board book bins at your public library, there will be a lot uh, bigger of a range of board books there. And some of them do have a lot more text and the pictures are a little bit more detailed. And the children they depict are not necessarily babies, they're more toddlers. And so when you're looking at those board books, bins, we would say, like, take a, take a look at the book. If there, are, if there is a lot of text in it, if the children depicted are older, or the situation is something you don't think your baby will relate to, then just, you know, pick a different book. And, of course, always ask your local librarian, children's librarian, children's staff, because we are happy to talk about board books all the time. I love talking about board books with babies. So if that answers your question, great, but please do feel free to chime in with more questions and we can talk about it more later as well. Um, all right, we have right. I saw someone in the chat earlier mention the indestructible books and on the screen I have some examples of indestructible books. These are fantastic. They are things that we like to have in our baby time programs um, in our toy playtime afterwards, but they're not something that the library will circulate because they are meant to be chewed on and drooled on and uh, moved, manipulated all over the place. They really live up to the name. They're quite indestructible. You can get them on Amazon and probably some local stores as well, but they're really great. Babies love to experience books with all their senses, and we want to encourage that. They experience so much with their mouths because their mouths are their most sensitive organ for much of the beginning part of their lives. And so we don't want to discourage them from nomming on books, but maybe we don't want them to nom on library books. <laughs> so you can get them some books that they can nom on at home. And I know we are coming up on the end of the hour. We had a little bit of a late start. Um, if any of you need to leave, you know, feel free if you need to leave. You can always email, respond to the email that you got from me with any questions. We're going to keep going because I want to get some more information out to you, but please do let us know again in the chat if you have any questions. Uh, I'm going to move on to our last, I believe this is last for right, and these are fun with finger books. These are great books that have finger trails in them, and using books like this, using finger trail books or lift the flap books, I like these ones because it actually has both. Let's see if I can show you so it's not, there we go. Um, so these, these finger trails actually are inset so you can actually feel that they go around. This is an alphabet one, there's a number one as well. And Counting with a Ladybug or Follow My Heart has like a little maze. And these are ways that you can use your finger. You can use baby's finger and help them trace it out. And it helps get that individual sense of digits right there. So that's really nice for right. And I believe we're at toy time for right.
joy time. Okay. So fun things to do with baby, riding your, with applesauce on your baby's tray, make, make all sorts of um, shapes. So like if you have, well, if you had a book with you, of course, I don't have one right now, but if you went along the edge that, you know, to get that square feel of a book, that's a good thing for baby to start practicing, you know, writing. Um, let's see. Yeah, that baby can trace around your hand. And don't forget, they like to point. They will get really good at pointing at things. So just play with a baby's pointing finger. So, all right, some fun things. Anything that you can touch that has any inter interesting texture to it, like these bumpy balls, are really fun for writing um, skills because they get baby to use all their small motor. These things here, um, they are some of the most fun uh, toys to play with. They're called dimples and you just push them out and in and these are readily available. In fact, they even have one that can fit on your keychain so that you can um, play with it yourself or pull it out if you're in the middle of a restaurant or somewhere and baby needs something to do immediately. Um, and then of course, things that you can push and roll, those are great things for babies' hands as they're learning. Don't forget that they like to also play with the light switch. When my son was little, we would um, let him pretend that he was turning, that he was um, making us blink by turning on and off the light. So we would close our eyes and then open our eyes. Oh, it was just so much fun. We had fun with the, with the light switch and he was in charge of that. So he had a great time because that simple pushing um, was good for, um, so even the things in your house can be great things for toys. I love that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, the, another game we used to play when the kids were little was doot. And since they like to do that, that pointer finger, you know, you could just go doot anytime with your finger. Sometimes baby likes to do it. You can kind of zoom up to baby and doot like that. Um, just a lot of fun. Doot their noses, doot their bellies. Um, and if you've taken a bath and there's some steam on the window, have baby draw in the mirror on the in the bathroom that's a lot of fun back to you all right and i should mention i don't think we have it here i didn't think about it for the presentation but we do have at the library you can get examples of but they make these egg-shaped crayons which are really wonderful for baby hands that's so true. if you want your baby to actually get practice with writing and drawing there are egg-shaped crayons uh, Crayola makes some really nice high quality ones you can get on Amazon, but those are fantastic for getting that very initial feel because they are things that babies can actually grasp. So, all right, book play with your babies. So babies learn through play and we want them to enjoy books and we want them to be able to play with books. So it's totally okay for your baby to treat a book like a toy. It's all right to stack up board books and then have them knock them down or have them put them up in a domino line and knock them down that way. It's all right for baby to just enjoy flipping the pages back and forth and back and forth. It's a toy for them, it's enjoyable, and that is part of the reading experience when you're a baby. But in the meantime, we do have some playful books. This is actually, I think, my favorite category overall. I love the game Peekaboo with babies. It's so wonderful because it helps build babies' grasp of object permanence, which is basically the idea that when you leave a room or when you cover up a toy, it's still actually there. And it's amazing because their little brains don't grasp it until about four to seven months, but there are things that we can do to help them uh, develop it even faster. And some of those things are playing the game peekaboo and also using books like Pika Baby. Uh, Karen Katz has a ton of amazing lift the flap books. Lift the flaps books in general are just really good for peekaboo. This just happens to be a really big one, but she's got smaller ones too. It's kind of hard to show. Let's see, can you see that okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. This is a really big format one, but she's got lots of smaller ones. 
Um, Pika Zoo, Pika Who Too, those are both series. So there are other Peekaboo books in those series. And then Peekaboo Morning by Rachel Isadora is a really sweet book that shows a little boy having some Peekaboo fun with his whole family in a morning. So that's a really sweet one as well. And our next category, this is my all-time favorite category, books or toys. Like I mentioned, you can stack them, you can set them up, or you can just play with books. Like, for example, look, I'm a firefighter. You can play dress up with a book. This is book o hats. Um, they also make book o beards and book o teeth, which is actually really fun for Halloween if you're up for, they've got some, um, some bigger, more, they've got some interesting teeth shown. Not always the, the cutest teeth, but they're definitely fun to look at. There's a chef hat right there. Um, so really fun for playing dress up with your baby. When we were talking about books that are for older babies or for young toddlers, Fancy Pants is one of those that I would say is probably a little bit for older babies or younger toddlers. It's got these great wheels that you can use to change their outfits. And again, these are the types of books that are really great for more mobile babies. When your baby is not as interested in just snuggling up in your lap anymore, uh, you can get their attention with books like this one or books like this one, which is High Five Animals, where you've got some animal sounds and they get to do a high five on each page. It's really simple, it's really easy, but it's really fun and interactive for baby. And then my last book in this particular category is Play This Book. There's also, now this is not a board book, it is a hardcover book, but the pages are actually a little bit more, um, they're thicker than regular picture book pages. And this is really fun because you can interact and actually play this book. So there's different instruments depicted. I love the piano. You're just gonna play the piano and make some sound noises. But this author um, and illustrator team, they also have a book called Pet This Book, which is about petting animals on the book. So that's another way that you can interact with that. This is our last book category, all right? We're almost done. And these are our interactive big books. So these are books that you can interact with in a lot of different ways. The Baby's Big Busy Book and My First Busy World books um, are great because they have different textures. They've got lots of lift the flaps. They'll have mirrors and, and different, um, textures that they can feel and everything. So there's a lot of different ways for them to interact with these books. And then Christy Matheson has a whole series now. This is her first one. This is Tap the Magic Tree. These are hardcover books. They're not board books, but they're really great because you can go through an entire season with this book. So this says, rub the tree to make it warm. and see what forms. And I don't know if you can see, but there's little buds developing. And it actually goes through the whole book. You end up shaking the book. You're gonna shake the book and shake all those apples off the tree. The leaves come in. Um, so lots of fun ways to interact with books here. All right, toy time and play. Take it away, Alana. Actually, I have one poll. Yay. We're going to do our poll. Let me find this one. This is our play poll. So let's see what you think, trivia-wise. Babies can respond to you when you interact with them as early as. Any guesses? Oh, we're pretty neck and neck here. <laughs> right. I'm going to end the polling and share it because we are... I yes. know after two o'clock, so. And the, and the answer is between one and three weeks. Yes, baby can really respond to you right away. As long as you're holding them close, they can see your face and begin to, even just for small glimpses, start to communicate with you. So, yes, great fun. Good job. All right, 
best toy of all, you can play, you can tickle, you can do bubbles and water play, you can help baby understand his world by having fun with them. Of course, peekaboo is a great one. So yeah, take your laundry basket, push baby around, all the different kinds of ways you can play. Um, some of the fun things you can do, um, I couldn't find my squish rattler, but this is another one that you can play with. Um, anything that's got movable parts, those are great fun and baby can teethe on it. Um, any blanket can play peekaboo no matter what it is. Uh, if you had a puppet around, puppets are great fun. This one's one that's for a bath pub that I found at the dollar store years ago. And that is really a, a fun toy to play with in the bath pub or anytime. You could keep one of these in your purse because they are so lightweight or even just a little finger puppet would be good. Um, if you had a boat to play with, that would be a fun one in your tub. And then of course, nesting things. Nesting things are great fun. So turn that, there we go. So any kind of a nesting toy like these are great because these are like cups, but you can pretend they're cups and pass it to baby and have baby pretend to drink. Or you could say hat, put it on your head, let baby have it on his head very gently and then put it back on yours, always saying hat. So that's a fun one. Um, also, you can change your expressions like um, Sarah Ellen was talking about with a mirror. You know, you can put this in front and look like that or smile or whatever, you know. So it's always a surprise. That's kind of a fun game to play with babies. So there you go. All right, so uh, we would love your opinion. We'd like to know what you think. So I'm going to do a new poll and just ask after our presentation today, which practice are you most looking forward to trying with your baby? I'm excited that people are happy about singing. Yay. Me too. That was making me happy too. <laughs> I'm so glad. It good. seems like we've got a nice range. That is so. really good. The, the writing excellent. skills too. Yeah, just all of them are great. Yeah. So those are the results there. And then before we get into our question and answer period, I just wanted to let you guys know, we mentioned this briefly uh, earlier, but we have a parenting collection at Pikes Peak Library District. And the physical collection is housed at the Family Place Libraries, of which Library 21C is one of them, as well as Fountain and Sand Creek. But any of these resources can be put on hold and sent anywhere in the district to be picked out. And they're really wonderful because they are chosen especially for parents of young children. They cover a wide range of topics from pregnancy to breastfeeding and nutrition and playing outside, uh, early literacy, singing, American Sign Language, there's even books for military families and single families and all sorts of different things. So take a look at those. There are not only books, there's also DVDs and magazines, brochures, and you can find them in the catalog if you look under the shelf location when you're doing a search and do parenting, that's specifically a shelf location there. Or when I send out the handout, there will be a link directly to that search. And there's also a lot of wonderful parenting books in our OverDrive ebook collection because we all know that we don't all necessarily have time to be reading a physical book. And if you can pull it up on your phone, that's golden. So check out the parenting collection. Thank you for those of you who are watching this later on and have a great day.